It's coming up on 5:30, and this is WKYT this morning. Another fiery debate in the books for the election season. We'll recap the debate just ahead. Plus, we're tracking an Amber Alert issued for Kentucky. State police are looking for a missing four-year-old girl. The latest details on the search coming up. Plus, Wildcat fans now have the chance to weigh in on a name for a new piece of Rupp Arena. How you can join the contest, plus your Kentucky forecast, all coming up on WKYT This Morning. This is WKYT This Morning. Good morning. It is great to see you bright and early on this Monday, October 10th. I'm Andrea Walker. Bill Bryant has the morning off. Well, fall was definitely in the air this weekend, but things are heating up a little bit for your work week. Meteorologist Micah Harris joins us now with an early look at your forecast. It was a bit chilly, though. I mean, we sat there in the 60s. Not only that, but we had some pretty gusty winds, too, on Saturday. And so it was a bit chilly at times there the past weekend and off toward your last Friday. Now, here's the deal. We get into your morning hours just before sunrise. We're going to see temperatures there in the low to mid-40s. It's a pretty chilly start by the afternoon. We're roughly 70 degrees. Some will be in the upper 60s, some in the lower 70s, but nonetheless. Stay dry again today, mostly sunny skies, and we're going to be focusing in on not just the next couple of days, but off toward late in the work week because that's when a front comes barreling on through. I'm going to show you if you can expect any rain out of that, and if you do, how much rain are we talking about? I have that coming up. Micah, thank you. And we are tracking breaking news this morning. An alert has been issued in Kentucky and Tennessee this morning. Kentucky State Police need your help finding a missing four year old girl. WKYT's Lauren Miner is at our live desk with the very latest details on the search. Good morning, Lauren. Good morning, Andrea. The little girl police are looking for is four year old Rebecca Lewis. According to the Polk County Sheriff's Office in Florida, Lewis, Lewis's 16 year old sister last saw her sleeping at 9 a.m. Saturday morning. At 9 45, Lewis was no longer in her bed. Police say Lewis was last seen in the area of Cove Lake State Park in Carryville, Tennessee. That is near Interstate 75, close to the Tennessee Kentucky border. We want you to take a good look at both of these. These images that you're seeing on your screen right now. Four year old Lewis is three feet tall, weighs 30 pounds, and has blonde hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing a pink dress. She is also believed to be with this man, pictured on the right hand side of your screen, 31 year old West Hogs. Police say he was last seen wearing blue jeans and a light colored t shirt. He has an L shaped scar on the left side of his head and tattoos of a blue cross and a Chinese symbol. Police believe the two are in a 2012 silver Nissan Versa with an Alabama handicap tag number 4JL26. Now, if you have any information on the whereabouts of Rebecca Lewis, you are asked to call Kentucky State Police at 502-272-2221 or just pick up the phone and dial 911. Reporting at the news desk, Lauren Miner, WKYT. Lauren, thank you very much. Now to the story everyone will be talking about today. Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton went after each other during the second presidential debate at Washington University. Jamie Yukas takes a look at some of the more contentious moments between the two candidates. Hillary Clinton couldn't wait to celebrate on the plane ride home after wrapping up last night's second presidential debate. I feel absolutely great. The most important thing is we need to take off so that we can actually have some drinks served. Donald Trump's team was just as excited. Uh, I think he prosecuted his case uh, much better in this debate than he did in the first one. But there were no celebrations during the debate as the two candidates attacked each other for 90 minutes. Trump had to answer for a video from 2005 where he described his advances on women. I'm very embarrassed by it. I hate it. But it's locker room talk and it's one of those things. I will knock the hell out of ISIS. We're going to defeat ISIS. Okay, Donald, I know you're into big diversion tonight. Anything to avoid talking about your campaign and the way it's exploding and the way Republicans are leaving you. Well, Clinton was attacked for her use of a private email server while Secretary of State. I am going to instruct my Attorney General to get a special prosecutor to look into your situation. Trump's attacks on Clinton actually started before the debate when he sat down with four women who accused her and President Bill Clinton of sexual misconduct and bullying. Clinton's campaign says the guests were meant to distract Clinton, but say it didn't work. The two candidates will square off one more time when they debate in Las Vegas next week. 
Jamie Yukas, CBS News, St. Louis. Hillary Clinton will campaign in Michigan and Ohio today while Donald Trump heads to Pennsylvania. Some people here in Lexington went to the theater to watch last night's debate. Regal Theaters nationwide invited the public to come in and watch a free showing of the debate along with popcorn and a drink. Every major news station carried the debate, but many people we talked to said there's something about getting out and watching the debate surrounded by people they don't know. They tell us it's a way people can come together. I think it's the fact of the atmosphere. You know, usually people watch alone at their home. I think it's the fact that they're going to be surrounded by people from different swaths, different backgrounds, and the fact that at least this is one way in which the nation can come together in a deeply divided time. Now, if you plan on voting this November, time is running out to register. The deadline for voter registration in Kentucky is 4 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. We are trafficking a crime alert this morning right here in Lexington. Police say they're searching for a group of people involved in an armed robbery overnight. WKYT's Mike Byer is live in Lexington with the details. Good morning, Mike. Good morning, Andrea. Police are searching for five men this morning. They say that group of men robbed a man and a woman outside of their apartment. Now, this happened here on Horseman's Lane, not too far from UK's campus. This happened overnight. Police say a man and a woman were outside of their apartment when they were approached by five men. Officers tell us they demanded money from the victims and proceeded to steal keys, a cell phone, and cash. Police say the thieves had a gun and a large knife. They haven't released a description of the five men, but they say they were all wearing hoodies and dark clothing. Now, although the victims were shaken up over the incident, police tell us they were not hurt. Live in Lexington, Mike Byer, WKYT. A shooting at a Lexington Park sends a teenager to the hospital. Lexington police were called to Dixie Park on Eastland Parkway yesterday morning. They say four teens were arguing when one of them pulled out a gun. Police found the injured teen at a nearby home and say he told them he accidentally shot himself. So far, no charges have been filed in the case. A Boyle County couple accused of allowing three children to live in what investigators call unfit conditions now officially facing charges. According to the Advocate Messenger, Gregory Wilkerson and Brandy Harmon were indicted on three counts of criminal abuse. The Boyle County Sheriff's Office says the two were found back in July living in a shed behind Wilkerson's sister's home with no electricity or running water. Deputies told us at the time the children had to be treated for bed bugs and extreme rashes. Wilkerson and Harmon are in the Boyle County Detention Center. Police are still searching for a man in connection with a fatal shooting in Laurel County. It happened at a home on Middle Ground Road in London. Police say they found Donnie Stone dead from multiple gunshots. They are now looking for Stone's stepson, John Stricker. They say Stricker is considered armed and dangerous. Families say Stricker has a history of mental illness and is off his medication, and neighbors say they've seen some unusual behavior from him before. It really scares me because I've got three grand custody of three grand grandkids plus I've got another granddaughter that lives with me and it scares me because I don't know what he will do or anything. Police say they think Stricker is driving a 2004 black Dodge pickup truck with Kentucky license plate 408 VBW. They say the front grille of the truck is missing and it has a faded front hood. U.S. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell will be in Kentucky today. His first stop in the bluegrass today will be in Danville. He'll talk to city leaders and members of the community on some major issues. Senator McConnell will be in Lexington this afternoon. He'll announce a new initiative at the U.K. College of Law along with U.K. President Eli Capilouto. That announcement is at 3 o'clock this afternoon. A Kentucky firefighter's name is now on the National Fallen Firefighters Memorial in Maryland. Captain Zach Clevenger was a firefighter in Estill and Montgomery counties for a decade. Those who worked alongside him say he was one of the best. Clevenger's wife and son were at the service. Clevenger was one of three firefighters from Kentucky added to the memorial. His name was also added to a memorial in Frankfort. The community gathered in Clay County to say goodbye to the legendary Kentucky basketball coach Bobby Keith. He coached the Clay County basketball team for 29 seasons. He was named Kentucky High School Coach of the Year five times. Coach Keith died Wednesday at the age of 75. A service was held in the Clay County High School gym named after Coach Keith. And many knew the coach as fiercely competitive, but to some, he wasn't that intimidating. On the court, he looked ferocious, but at home, he was just a big teddy bear. He was, uh, he was a wonderful father. Family members plan to set up a trophy case at Clay County High School in his honor. They also hope to create a scholarship fund to help athletes. 
All right, UK fans, listen up. Earlier this year, Rupp Arena took down the iconic sound system known as Big Bertha, and now Cats fans are getting a chance to name Rupp Arena's new state of the art scoreboard. The contest will be online. The grand prize for the winning contest entry, get this, will be two tickets to every public ticketed event, including games and concerts in Rupp for the 2017 season. I, I can't think of another building that named its sound system somehow in 1976. Ours got named Big Bertha, uh, quite offhand remark, and it stuck. We even had a retirement party for Big Bertha. Uh, so it, it, it kind of makes sense. Maybe we'll just have a contest to name the new uh, replacement. You can find details about the naming contest right now on our website, WKYT.com. Can't beat that prize. Well, it's time now to take a look at live drive traffic this morning. Here is a look at the traffic map. A quick look of the region right now. A lot of green on your screen, which is a great way to start your Monday. Let's make it a good one. Now let's take a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government's live drive cam. We're now looking at Versailles and Forbes Road. As you can see, traffic pretty light this time of day, which is typical. Things will, of course, speed up as we move through the morning hours. There is still a lot to come this morning on WKYT. Still ahead, we're taking a closer look at odd competition, the wife carrying competition. Yes, this is a real thing. We'll find out who won and their prize when we come back on WKYT this morning. I don't know why, but I've always wanted to do that. I think we, I think we could win it. Back to normal is what we're looking at. There's one spot with rain across the United States. Could we get in on that action? I'm gonna have that coming up next. Now, your hour-by-hour hour forecast with meteorologist Micah Harris. It's a pretty chilly start to the day. We're holding on to the 40s outside. There are a few spots actually in the 30s early this morning, so just keep in mind, maybe a light sweater before you take off. It's probably your best bet, especially any kids that are heading out to the bus stop, which I know a lot of us, uh, the kiddos are actually uh, out of school for today, but for fall break. But, you know, if your kids aren't, Throw a sweater on them before they take off. Send out the bus stop. That might be a little bit chilly. 47 degrees right now in Lexington. We look at the dew points. Dew points are sitting there in the low 40s, so most of us will stay out of the 30s, uh, meaning those temperatures won't go below that. 70 degrees later on this afternoon. Extremely nice conditions. I don't see much of an issue. It gets a little bit warmer than the past couple of days. The past couple of days were a bit chilly, especially there on your Saturday. Is your Saturday set in the 60s with gusty winds, 15 to 25 miles per hour? We won't have that today, but it is going to be on the cooler side. But it's not all that bad. Here comes another fall front. Now through your Wednesday, I don't see many issues. We're there in the low to mid 70s. Then on Thursday, that's when that front actually starts to make its way through. Thursday, it'll bring us that chance of rain. But the chance of rain is still relatively small. There's not a great chance. High pressure system back toward the west, and it looks like it's going to funnel in that chilly air. So the breakdown of it, yes, it brings that chance of rain, but it's 30 to 40 percent, and that's it. That's going to be Thursday and on your Friday. Temperatures will drop big time back into the 60s on both of those days. So it's going to be really chilly there as you're heading out to Friday night football. But here's the deal. Here's the breakdown on some of these facts there for our rainfall. We just haven't seen much rainfall outside uh, the past couple of months. Since August 1st, there's only been four days that have been above half an inch. That's not very good. That's since August 1st. I mean, you're talking almost two and a half months. So only four of those days, the past two and a half months, have been above 0.5 inches. And September and October are typically the driest months of the year. So it's not really far, uh, far off from what we typically get around here. But we are, for the year, we are 0.72 inches above average. So that's not too bad. But we're still yeah, in, that, in that swing of things now through the rest of October. It just doesn't look that good for any rainfall outside. Let's talk about your seven-day forecast. And here's evidence of it. Check it out. We're sitting there in the 70s the next few days. If you have any plans heading outdoors the next few days, it looks really good and will actually feel really good too. Off towards your Thursday and Friday, I don't see any issues. It'll drop it back down to the 60s, mid 60s, so that's a bit on the chilly side, which typically you got to remember this time of year, we're right around 70 degrees, so it's not too far off, but it is below average. And those are your better rain chances. I should say your only rain chances. They're not good at all, they're at 30%. But like I was talking about, you got to remember September, typically we get 2.9 inches for the month, 
And then October, it's typically 3.15 inches. So you're not expecting a lot of rain anyways right. for September and October. So it's been dry, but that's normal for this time of mm -hmm. year. If we get it, we get it. If we don't, we don't. That's right. There you there go. You go. <laughs> Thank you, Micah. You well, carrying your wife over the threshold means good luck in your new marriage, but carrying her through an obstacle course means beer and cash prizes. The North American Wife Carrying Competition was held in Maine over the weekend. A husband and wife from Maine won the championship. They'll take home 11 cases of beer and $665, or they can get the weight of their wife in beer. And five times her weight in cash. There you go. Do the math on that one. The couple will go to Finland for the world championship now. So good for them. Micah thinks he could do really well in this competition. <laughs> I don't know what Danielle thinks of that, but there you go. <laughs> Cool stuff. Coming up, you'll get a look at the stories making news at this hour. Plus, we'll take another look at traffic impacts we have today. Keep it here on WKYT. It's 5:51. Welcome back into WKYT this morning. This just into our WKYT newsroom. Eastern Kentucky University is reporting an emergency near their Richmond campus. Now, here's what it reads: It says, "Protect yourself. Take shelter in a secure place. And if you're off campus, stay away." We're going to keep updating you on this on this story as we get more information. So stay connected to us on air and online as we bring you the very latest details. We are also tracking breaking news this morning. An Amber Alert has been issued in Kentucky and Tennessee. Kentucky State Police need your help finding a missing four-year-old girl. Rebecca has blonde hair and blue eyes. She was last seen wearing a pink dress. Police think Rebecca is with West Hogs. Police say he was last seen wearing blue jeans and a light-colored T-shirt. A Mercer County teenager accused of murdering and robbing another teen will head to court today. 16-year-old Trenton Easterling is accused of murdering and robbing Tristan Cole back in April. Easterling will attend the hearing. It's the first time he'll appear in court since pleading not guilty in July. He's expected in court at 9 o'clock this morning. Two other teens face charges in connection to the case. Wildcat fans are getting a chance to name Rupp Arena's new state-of-the-art scoreboard. The board replaces the iconic Big Bertha speaker. The contest will be online. The grand prize for the winning entry will be two tickets to every public ticketed event, including games and concerts in Rupp for the 2017 season. We've got contest details right now on WKYT.com. Topping your national headlines this morning, the presidential candidates trade attacks in another fiery debate. And Hurricane Matthew has moved on, but North Carolina is still dealing with life threatening flooding. Weijia Jang has your top stories this morning. Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump traded attacks in last night's bitter debate. Trump hit Clinton on her use of a private email server while she was Secretary of State, saying she'd be in jail if he was president. Clinton declared Trump's vulgar comments about women in a recently released tape prove that he is unsuitable to hold the office. The two candidates will face off for a third and final debate on October 19th. The guided missile destroyer USS Mason was targeted in a failed missile attack off the coast of Yemen yesterday. The crew of the Mason detected two missiles fired toward the ship from territory in Yemen controlled by Iranian-backed rebels. Both missiles fell into the sea before reaching the destroyer. Once a potent hurricane, Matthew is speeding east into the Atlantic this morning, but life-threatening flooding continues in North Carolina. Those are some of the day's top stories. I'm Weijia Jang, CBS News, St. Louis. Annette Bening is back on the big screen and a legendary lineup of all-time rock giants at the Desert Trip Concert Festival. Suzanne Marquez has those stories and more in today's Eye on Entertainment. The Rolling Stones and Bob Dylan kicked off Desert Trip over the weekend in Indio, California. Paul McCartney and Neil Young perform Saturday night. All the artists are back this coming weekend. Desert Trip is expected to rake in $160 million. Annette Benning and the cast of 20th Century Women turned out for a special screening at the New York Film Festival. This is the really hard part, and then it gets better. The movie is set in 1979. Benning plays a single mom, sharing a home with her son, a handyman, and a punk artist. She was so full of contradictions. And as I was working, I was always on that knife edge of trying to find where she was, where the truth of her was. You can catch 20th Century Women on the big screen in January. I'm to go to America. And from the makers of Gravity comes the new movie Desierto. Starring Gael Garcia Bernal and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. 
It's about a group of immigrants trying to make it across the U.S. border and the ruthless vigilante who tries to stop them. It is a portrayal of our biggest nightmare of what can happen when somebody just validates that point of view. Desierto is out in theaters on Friday. And that's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. All right, now let's get a check this hour on today's traffic trouble spots with live drive traffic. Here's a look at the current travel times. Everything looking very good this Monday morning. 12 minutes from Nicholasville to Lexington, 12 the same in Versailles. As we said, everything looking good. Now let's take a look at the Lexington Fayette Urban County Government live drive cam. We are right now looking at New Circle and Nicholasville Road, and the road is all yours if you head out the door this morning. Looking good on your Monday. And if you're about to head out the door, you may want to grab a coat because it is chilly this morning. Meteorologist Micah Harris has the details as we head into the work week. Oh, it absolutely is. You may need that coffee, too, just to warm you up a bit. But the morning chill, we're at 37 to 47 degrees, depending on where you're located. So a sweater, a light coat, more than likely will be needed as you're stepping out the door early this morning, especially for those kiddos going in and standing out at the bus stop. It's going to be a bit of a chill in the air. Down in Wayne County, that's where we're actually the coldest. We're 37 degrees right now in Monticello. 43 there for the most part on average because some of us are actually in the upper 40s this morning. So it's a, it's a chilly sunrise. But once we get past sunrise, those temperatures will rise very rapidly. We're at 64 there by noontime as you're heading out to eat. Uh, teachers, you'll be able to get the kids outdoors, but just know that it's going to be a little bit cool during the morning. 70 degrees by the afternoon. Fantastic weather in store. Stick with us. We have another hour of WKYT News. You're about to take off. Have a great day.